share what she's learned about incremental website design and how to keep working it to your advantage. For the trick to incremental web design, please help me welcome Gail Williams. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Word, Word Camp Seattle. I am here from Sarasota, Florida, the exact opposite end. And I think you you might have seen yesterday a friend of mine, Liz Corson, speaking on right, right, right now. And so we both came from the ends of the earth to Seattle to be with you. And it's exciting. So how many of you in the audience are agency owners, freelancers, you're building websites for other people? Oh yeah, yeah. And how many of you know that you're already using some form of incremental website design? Okay. What I'm going to do today is first let me already introduce myself as being from Sarasota. But a few other things that you need to know about me is that I am not a developer. I am not really a computer person. That's all how I've always felt. Although I did have an early Tandy and was the one who set up those first IBM PCs, the very first generation for my first job. But I've never really identified as a computer person. I'm really more of a writer, a communicator, a, a marketing person, a PR person. And so I write about music because I'm a flutist. And I'm from Orlando, Florida. But I'm here today to talk about how we can approach website design in a way that may not be different, truly, from what you're already doing, but how we frame it for our clients and maybe frame it for ourselves so that it can be to our advantage and for our clients. We're going to talk about website redesigns, kind of the, the look back on what they've been and what the reality is today. I'm going to look at the various types of incremental website design we can talk about and how we can really use it. Okay? Is everyone on board for that? Okay, great. Website redesign. And of course, in the very early days, we were building a new website for a company that was asking us, do you think this internet thing is going to stick around? Do we need a website? Anyone developing websites back in the 1990s? Do you remember how expensive they were? How much did we charge for them? It was 40, 50,000 right off for a 10-page website. <laughs> Am I far off? <laughs> it, it was pretty crazy. I was the one buying, buying them for it. was pretty crazy. And then, because it was such a big deal to get your first website, I would say for 10, 15 years after that, whenever a company needed to redo their website, it was a big deal. You would have a whole committee. You would have everyone getting together and talking about all the departmental aspects. And then you would have the quoting system, and it was crazy. But what would happen is you'd actually just tear down the old site, just tear it down, rebuild it. Because code was different. It was a very different thing. And so building a new website was this monumental task. And I was inside those companies where it's like, okay, it's going to take us two years, but we're going to build a new website. And it was painful. And this is kind of what it looked like. You see, you would build your website, and it would be the best thing in the world, and you wouldn't touch it for five years. And it would slowly decay and lose its productivity. And then you would build a new website and let it decay again for five years. Did y'all see that too? And it was painful every time. So it didn't have to be that way, but this was what we experienced. 
And I mentioned the cash crunch too. Now, I remember when I would contract for someone and then when I first started off how we would bill for new website design, we would ask for 50% down payment. That's pretty much the norm these days, isn't it? Still? Am I off? Okay, 50% down payment, then we'll start. And then the balance is due before launch. Or you might have stages. But if you have a team, your client is taking and has the mindset that it's gonna take months. It's gonna take a year to figure this out. You end up holding the bag. You are kind of working and not getting cash into your business for a long time. So I see that as a real problem. Luckily these days we can build websites a lot faster, at least our side of it. But we have to do something totally different. We cannot be in that crunch mindset anymore. Anyone familiar with Kaizen? It's the lean production, daily, constant, continual improvement. And this was something that came from Japanese manufacturing processes. And it has colored almost every bit of our world because we're all beginning to see a weight. It's, it kind of weight loss can be this way. I'm just going to do a little bit every day, a little bit going to do better every day. I began talking with, in these terms to my clients a number of years ago. Just let's, let's do something. Let's get something going. And when I was working, now that I'm working in WordPress, it's really easy to just keep going. You don't have to swipe the board clean. You just keep everything up to date and you switch some things out. But that's continuous change for good. Then in, I know there must be some developers, software development companies, they use reiterative design, and it's a pretty logical structure. Initial planning, you detail the requirements, you analyze what needs to happen, and you implement, and then deployment. And that would be the launch. We get the specs for the website, we collect all the content, or we develop the content, we build the structure, we put it all together, and then launch. But then we also test it, we see how it's going, we evaluate, maybe we do some A-B testing, watch our analytics, and go back into planning a new stage <coughs> of, of improvement. But that's still not what's happening for most people. I mean, I hear smaller, smaller agencies that build a website and then they follow up with the client and they may get a maintenance contract or may not. And then maybe touch base with them a year later. Or if you follow what? Jocelyn. Huh? No, Rhonda, but Jocelyn. Jocelyn and Rhonda were saying you keep in touch with your clients. But if, why not be working on their website much more frequently? And of course, Eric Reese with the Lean Startup. This, this idea of continually working is just part of our, the zeitgeist today. Now when I joined up with HubSpot, any other HubSpotters in the audience? No? Oh, okay, yay. Are you still a HubSpot partner? Not at the moment. Okay. It's expensive. <laughs> yeah. However, I learned so much just running with that crowd. And one of the things that we got in our coaching was we were, we were being coached through this process of working with clients, building a HubSpot, fully full inbound marketing, content marketing,